anyway, now the boring hotels episode. <laughs> By now, we've covered the four major parks of Walt Disney World. Each park has some fun things to offer and some things <laughs> worth skipping. How do you get from park to park? Well, unlike the Disneyland Resort, which is small enough to have everything in walking distance, the hot spots of Walt Disney World are strewn far and wide throughout the vast swamp land. As such, you'll probably want to... Haley, if you want to be on through, you are also welcome. There's the famous she, is, she says she is not presentable at the moment. Fair, fair enough. Which means they could slap the Avengers on it without violating Universal's Marvel contract. Monorails here <laughs> run between Magic Kingdom, and Magic Kingdom Resort Hotels and the Transportation and Ticket Center. Some parks and hotels can even I'm be kidding about this one being boring. It was mostly really boring to edit. And of course, the parks and resorts have Honestly, it looks like that kind of project. This this one, I don't know um I don't know how many people <clears throat> I don't know if anyone remembers, but this one was long delayed after the Hollywood Studios episode, and there are a couple of reasons behind that. One is uh, the Hollywood Studios episode, uh, as good as I think it is, like I do think it's one of the solid episodes, but I did kind of rush to get out because I was getting to the point where the job that I was working that brought me down to Orlando was ending, and I knew I needed to start applying for other jobs. And I thought there was, uh, among the jobs I was applying to was Disney World. And I wanted to make sure that episode was out before I potentially got a job where I wouldn't be allowed to continue to make this series. Um, I didn't get a job at Disney World. I, of course, got a job at a different theme park with World in the name, um, which, <laughs> which... Disney C. Up... <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Um, but I wanted to make sure I got that out of or, like, if the series was going to be shut down, I wanted to make sure I at least got that episode out first. Right. Um, and then, because I rushed that out, I had, like, so little done on the hotels, on the resorts and hotels episode, that it then took me forever to work on it. But also, just sorting the footage for this was so tedious, because... It was just me going to all the different hotels and just filming everything, just like looking, pointing the camera at every statue, at every sign, at everything, just gathering all the footage and then just having a pile of footage and not really having like a structure or format to it. Like at least when I'm covering an attraction, the attraction itself has a beginning, middle, end that I can use to sort things. Yes. With, with a hotel, it's just like I have to make up an order to do this in. And uh, I, I, again, I, I don't think the end result is bad, but just sorting through hours upon hours of raw footage of just different pictures in hotel lobbies was uh, the most tedious editing process of all the theme park videos. Yeah. And here we have every other public spot on the property. It's nice that they make transportation relatively The shot of the bus I got from the monorail from Epcot. I was very uh, happy I was able to get nice. that shot. But Florida's transportation system will still never be quite as efficient as Disneyland. I was level when we when we get those shots that are just perfect. They work out nicely, yeah. Yeah. spend half your day in transit, it's best to choose just one or two parks for the day and stick with them. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Never checked out ESPN Wide World of Sports, so I can't review it. Just like the time they all went on that road trip. And yeah, it's not there anymore, is it? Or the time you weren't invited to your own brother's birthday party. I can't keep track of all that stuff on property. I don't know which of the mini golf courses are still open. You know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Well, fortunately, there's plenty at the Walt Disney World Resort that doesn't require any money. Sort of funny. A bit, a bit. Yes, I'm talking about the resort hotel. Now I know what you're thinking. Aren't hotels really expensive, especially on the Disney property? Well, yeah. Cool. I stayed in line. But if you just want to walk around and soak them in, that's... Yes, a on a crazy person's dime. Boring, you say, and I say... It was, I mean, honestly, it made it that much more better. And also it depends on which <laughs> hotel you're looking at. Some of them have just as much atmosphere and Disney magic packed into them as one of the parks and others don't. 
I'm not going to look at every. The music here is also uh, the rap song Nightcaps from uh, the Community Season 1 soundtrack, which is a, a rap song about how all my boys and all my peeps like to wear nightcaps when we go to sleep. And it was, I, I thought a song about sleeping would make sense for Hotel B roll. Since at my last count, there were 378,000 of them, and they seem to be multiplying faster than some bacteria. But I'll look at a few of the major ones. Most of the resorts follow the same basic formula. They have a hotel, timeshare villas, gift shops, nice sit-down restaurants, fast food restaurants, a large pool area, a smaller, quieter pool area, arcades, and various other things depending on their theme. Also, all of the arcades have Pirates of the Caribbean pinball, I guess because they're trying to overcompensate for how short the actual ride is here. I don't believe they all have their pinball anymore, but for that brief window, every single arcade on property had Pirates pinball. It comes as no surprise that out of all the parks in Walt Disney World, Magic Kingdom is the one with the most additional stuff surrounding it. Within the Magic Kingdom's realm, there's a golf course, a racetrack, an abandoned water park, a campground, and four resort hotels surrounding the Seven Seas Lagoon. Each resort is designed as a companion to one of the park's lands. The Contemporary Resort for Tomorrowland, the Polynesian for Adventureland, the Grand Floridian for Main Street, and the Wilderness Lodge for Frontierland. We'll begin here at the Contemporary Resort, which is a really stupid name for a resort because it pretty much guarantees they're going to need to update the whole thing every couple of years just to remain contemporary. Actually, they don't need to update the style if they can just keep the theme vague enough that it can pass as contemporary in any area. I just and that's some of the rooms down. are themed after freaking Incredibles. Yeah. I just went up and down the escalators a couple of times in the lobby getting those shots of myself. Um, and I believe the music I use here is from Telltale Sam and Max. I, be I believe it is the song that the obsolete uh, computers sing. Uh. <laughs> well, lame theme aside, the Contemporary Resort might be the most convenient hotel you can stay at as a Magic Kingdom guest. You can walk right to the park, and everything else you need is right in the middle of the main floor. The restaurants, shops, arcades, artwork, even the monorail goes right through the building. And if and yes, this is my secret. Uh, when I lived in Florida, back when you could park at the hotels for free, if you told them you were meeting someone there, I would just park at the temporary resort and walk to Magic Kingdom. That is, uh, <laughs> my understanding, that is not something you can get away with anymore. But it was... Honestly, more convenient than paying for parking and taking a boat or a monorail or any of that. Because, like, at the contemporary parking lot, you're right there. Yep. So, so uh, contemporary is honestly the, the most convenient hotel to Magic Kingdom. If you're too tired to stay in the park late enough to see the fireworks, you can see them from here. And I'm told they pump the show's audio. Reusing my own footage. If you're staying here, you can experience the blandness from the comfort of your own hotel. And speaking of blandness, I'm sure this is a perfectly nice hotel to stay at, but there's not much to make it worth just visiting. It's hard to weave much Disney magic when your theme is an ordinary modern-day hotel. Plus, apparently, if we stay here too long, we grow extra limbs. Oh, yep, the, the Mary Blair oh, goat with five legs. And this is what I'm talking about. Pick a theme and run with it. Ooze with atmosphere. This is why we come to Disney parks. Take us into another world. Even if that world this is the one I stayed at. Of an actual geographic location. There's a volcano water slide. There's a beach. There's dinner theater. Why would anybody stay at the Contemporary Resort when this was available? Okay, there's a bit of a difference, but... And I didn't have to pay that! <laughs> Aren't you just so special? ...which is considered Disney's most luxurious resort. It's Victorian-themed, modeled in part after California's... Fan yeah, I stayed in one of the, uh... What's up? No, no, go ahead. Yeah, I, I would say I stayed at one of the... <clears throat> one of the houses that faced the lagoon that was just literally right across from... The ca like I could see the castle and see the fireworks literally every night, and also the little I don't know if you ever like stayed around at one of the hotels like at nighttime around especially around the lagoon. They had like a floating Main Street electrical parade that went on like about uh, a couple times every week. I've seen this. Yes, I've seen this from. I, I think the first time I saw it, I. From the Magic Kingdom uh, train, uh, the Main Street train station, and I saw out over the lake. I'm like, "What's going on over there? There's like, there's like an electrical barges, huh? That's neat." Uh, mm -hmm. And then I did not look very further into it. Um, I uh, 
I got called out in the comments of this video for using the faulty tower theme for the most luxurious hotel. And the main reason I did that was because I feel like the uh, Grand Floridian is what Basil and Sybil are trying to make their hotel into. Because, like, yes. they've got similar aesthetics. It's just that, you know, uh, the faulties do not put the care into making it actually work. Um, also, Haley is ready whenever you are able uh, to send. But yeah, look like staying in that room and just the first night just trying to like not necessarily relax, but just kind of essentially being barred from the park. And yes, I will eventually tell this story in a video uh, just because it's <laughs> been 10 years and whatever. Um I like we were barred from going anywhere for like a couple of days, uh, having like premium annual passes in our hands <laughs> and just tell, being told, no, you can't go anywhere. Um, but like we were there in the hotel rooms, just like watching the fireworks and all that from across the lagoon. It's like, man, this would be great in the park. <laughs> <laughs> but then eventually like after a couple of days we were like yeah let's they were like okay yeah you're you're able to go in like whatever the, the person that was supposed to be here isn't going to be here so yeah <laughs> well i will say my current apartment uh is facing away where if i crank my neck around in the balcony I get an okay view of the Disneyland fireworks from where I live, so I <laughs> uh, don't want to dox myself by putting too many specifics on it, but... Um, right. Hi, Haley. Haley. Hello. I've researched so much about the history of freaking downtown Disney just because I was categorizing recipes this week. <laughs> I feel very prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, as as we get to that, uh, <laughs> you you will have more insight, I'm sure, than I ever did. <laughs> anyway, here's the part where I made fun of a bunch of hotels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's broke. <laughs> it's long before that. <laughs> this is essentially like the backdoor pilot to that. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to feel like you're in a Fitzgerald or a Wodehouse novel that somehow got infected with mouse ears, the final Magic Kingdom Resort is Wilderness Lodge, and I can't that's broke. <laughs> the lobby really do capture the feel of a lodge in the middle of the woods. And just to add to the desolate wilderness feel, you can't get here by monorail. I talked to this uh, when a couple years ago when we did the uh, commentaries for Tony's channel on his uh, ABC videos. This came out. Uh, I think I think this video went up a week after Family Matters video, and uh, I think so, yeah. And in the Family Matters video, Tony had the perfect wilderness lodge with um, a place where you friend zone nature, and mm -hmm. I I remember seeing that like this video was all just about finished and ready to go, and I remember seeing that joke and just thinking, damn it, that's like. That's so good. That is I, the I, I joke. wish I had thought of that. Uh, but instead, I just do my uh, giant grin to the camera here. Yeah, you have to take a bus or a boat to get to this one, so it's a little less convenient. But on the plus side, it means it's generally not quite as overrun by tourists as the other hotels. If you want some peace and quiet in the midst of your hectic Disney adventure, this isn't a bad one to check out. There's a creek, there's a nature trail. The only way this could be any more peaceful is if it didn't even have the giant hotel. Hey, speak of the devil. Yes, if and I also stayed there. Disney World, <laughs> yep. the wilderness campground is for you. And there's plenty of activities on the visit where uh, uh, we shot scenes for the Fantastic. <laughs> Literally the, the first day we had <laughs> met in person. Yep. It's that you can't walk everywhere. Oh, there's a walkway from the... That shot of me just waiting on the monorail was actually a uh, a between take shot from the uh, grand finale musical number of uh, <laughs> me uh, of me doing whichever song I was doing on the monorail, and I was just sort of pausing and collecting myself, and then I was like, yeah, "This is a a good shot of me waiting around." <laughs> 
a lot of uh, a lot of self shots in Dave Does Disney. Uh, I never used a selfie stick. I always just held the camera on myself like a plebeian. Um, uh, but I think for a while I did have a travel tripod that I sometimes had the camera on the end of. So yeah. I was doing the selfie stick thing before selfie sticks existed. Temporary resort to the park, and there's a walk before they became a problem and California Stream and had to get shut down because of it. And then there's a walkway from yep. the park that goes toward the Grand Floridian and then just stops. But there's no walkway. Although there is a walkway there now. There That's is a bridge. I've heard. Yeah. I've heard they finally completed that walkway. Um I'm sure if I ever actually try to do that walk, I'll realize, oh, this is way too fucking long for it to be worth it. But I wonder if it's part of the marathon track now because it's so long. Honestly, you know, probably. probably. That might be why they did it. That might be it's why. A thing for that. Yeah. Park, so you're stuck waiting on transportation. Sure, the wait's not as long as the walk would probably be, but some of us just like walking. But I know I'm in the minority here, and it's not worth it for Disney to pave more sidewalk just for those few of us who want to walk all the way to the park just to do more walking. <laughs> now let's take a look at the Epcot. Speaking resource. of Tolkien. So despite Epcot's general theme of progress and the future, all share a common theme of old-timey nostalgia. They circle around another body of water, Crescent Lake, which flows into both Epcot's World Showcase Lagoon and the lake outside Hollywood Studios. From any one of these hotels, you can take a boat or even walk to both the main Hollywood Studios entrance or the famed Secret Epcot back entrance. Yes. Yay. This was oh, honestly nice. so convenient, especially if you were park hopping. I will say, though, that first time we met, uh, that first day we met, I met you outside of International Gateway because uh, my pass was uh, blocked out while you were in town. Yeah. Um, so I... I Parked at the hotels like I always did anyway, but I met you outside. Yeah, we met at the boardwalk. Yes, and uh, then we got on the bus to go to downtown Disney. But, uh, we were apparently on the first stop of the Epcot Resorts line uh, because it stopped at yeah. every single other Epcot hotel before mm -hmm. it made its way to uh, to downtown. Downtown. There Disney. was a Disney so Springs. We... Now it's downtown. Yeah. Yeah. So we were, yes. uh, we were like, well, I guess we got on the wrong stuff. But at least we had plenty of time to chat. Oh, yeah. Was Port Orleans one of the Epcot resorts, or was it one of the... No, it's um, over in the downtown Disney area. Um, downtown, okay. Yeah. Because I, I stayed at the Port Orleans uh, Riverside Resort back when it was called Dixie Landings. That name yeah. was changed in 2001. Mm -hmm. All because Matt Damon's daughter wrote it a letter. Um, no. Uh. Apparently the bridge that's, that connects the Grand Floridian and the Magic Kingdom is not on Google Maps, but it is on Bing Maps. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, I actually, I, I only recently that's found nice. out I only recently found out just how much theme park stuff there is on Google Street View. So, if really, you, yes. Um, so, if you ever need like a shot of an exterior of a building that's not there anymore, you can always try going to Google Maps and going back to like uh, Throwback Street View and see if you can find the picture of that building. Yes, yes, yes. I, I remember. I, I didn't know that I could do throwback. Okay, now that makes sense. Because I remember back in the day, I was able to traverse the entirety of Universal Hollywood, like back in the day when the Marvel gift shop was still in there. So this was like around <laughs> 2010. Uh, what a time. Oh, yeah. Or maybe Production Central was already there by then. Maybe like 2009. Anyway, <laughs> hotels. <laughs> anyway, Epcot hotels. You might want to think about taking a bus to the beach club instead and going through this entrance. It might seem like adding more steps to your journey, but it could be less of a hassle. Incidentally, ready to have your mind blown? When you and this is Jeeves and Wooster music. You're on a bridge. Yeah, the road that circles around the Epcot resorts goes under Crescent Lake. I crossed this bridge dozens of times before I even noticed. Disney magic! That was another thing I did find out until another time I had taken buses 
and saw it coming around, and I was like, are we going to drive around the entirety of Epcot? How did this work? And then I was like, oh, there's a tunnel here all along. That is wild. Um, and, of course, on our coast, on Disney also has a bridge over Disneyland Drive. So uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a long Disney legacy of semi-secret bridges that you're on when you're in spaces between spaces. Oh, right, resorts. Let's start with the boardwalk. At first glance, this looks remarkably similar to the Grand Floridian, the same sort of old-timey area, hotel, and pool, and holy crap, demon clown face vomiting children run for your life! Which is no longer there! Yep, the clown's gone. That monster's gonna give me nightmares. <laughs> What's this boardwalk apart from the Grand Floridian is, well... But the sea monster's still there at Port Orleans. Fashion boardwalk. Much like Main hmm. Street, the atmosphere creates a nostalgia for a time that never quite existed, but even if the atmosphere isn't accurate, it's completely believable. There's almost total bare similitude, and you feel like you stepped into this long-forgotten past. And My favorite joke is coming up. I like this better than Main Street. A beautiful lake, a more interesting variety of shops, more eateries, including a pizza stand and a dessert shop, there's a dance hall, there's a giant ESPN billboard. Okay, yeah, that depletes the bare similitude of the atmosphere a bit. But what do you expect? Sports always ruin everything. Screw you, sports. Get the hell out of my country and go back to Sportlandia. <laughs> Matthew Iannone, everyone. It would look embedded in your ass. Like a Muppet. Uh, um, one of the very few, uh, one of the very few cameos from another person in Dave <laughs> uh, in, in Dave Does Disney proper, not counting, you know, the Fantasmic stuff. Um, right. And, uh, yeah, I, I thought of this anti-sports joke, and I thought, oh, wait, I know a guy who does sports content. He, he, should, uh, he should call me out. Which was another one that started his show around, like, 2011. Yep. Uh, he, he no longer does his show, but I, I, I enjoyed it while it was on. Oh, yeah. Um, Mm-hmm. And uh, we we saw him recently because he was in town for my uh, former roommate's wedding, and uh, and it was good to see him. And he is a, a soon to be father, so uh, congratulations, mm-hmm. congratulations, Matt. Um, and uh, I, yeah, uh, it was good to see him recently. That's I guess all I have to say about that. But uh, he yeah. shot me. He, he shot a couple of different takes. Uh, uh, some of them was more like, like storming, like, okay, where's Disney World? I'm going to beat the shit out of this cut and uh, like storming out of the room and stuff. Um, and he shot this at the same time as he got his Fantasmic cameo, which. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so he was, he was one of the first people I approached for the Fantasmic celebration montage just because I was also approaching him for his cameo. And like, well, I've got him. I might as well ask him about this other cameo, too. Um, and that was, yeah, I, I, I think several years before the Fantastic video came out. So, uh, yeah, because back in the day, you could just be like, hey, do you want to do a thing for me? Cool. <laughs> were we talking about hotels? We were. We were talking about Matt glaring at me and uh, <laughs> yep. threatening to attack me. I know they always have some your great ass when I'm talking about it. Oh, <laughs> Located near the boardwalk are two sister hotels, the Swan and the Dolphin, whose themes are statues of the animals they're named after, and animals that... Which sleep. Disney did not originally own. Yep. Yeah, these hotels aren't yep. actually run by Disney, so there's very little special about them. So let's move on to two brother hotels, the Yacht Club and the Beach Club. The Yacht Club obviously has a nautical theme, with decorations that would make Admiral Boom jealous. The Beach Club has similar ocean ties. Mary, Mary, Mary Poppins clips whenever I can. About relaxing by the seaside. From the solarium to the marketplace, everything here makes you feel like you're visiting a luxury seaside resort. Like old-timey beachgoers with their large floppy hats and their one-piece striped swimwear who never actually go in the ocean. And, and Mickey. As well, since while and Mickey. Club a beach, you're not actually allowed in the Not so hidden flounder. And Mickey, oh. Beach. <laughs> now, fuck flounder. You also share the storm along Bay pool area. This is one of the coolest pool areas I've ever seen, and it alone makes me want to stay in one of these hotels. There's a sand pool, which almost makes up for the beach's lack of functionality. There's windmills, and there's the shipwreck pool on the side of the beach, and the crow's nest of the ship is the water slide, and holy crap, I want to hang out here. I just wish it wasn't so crowded. I get easily overwhelmed in the presence of other humans. 
one uh, reference that got lost in the, uh, in, the, in the lost version of this video, shot on mini DV and edited in Connecticut when I couldn't go back and get more B-roll, uh, that got lost in a hard drive failure. Uh, when I didn't have enough footage of how crowded the bulls get, uh, the reference I sliced in was the stateroom scene from Dark Brothers and Night at the Opera. Uh, that, that was my visual <laughs> representation of crowdedness. Um, and uh, I, Also, there are gators in the lake. It, that's yeah. why, that's why there you are can't famously switch. gators in the lake. Alligators in the sewers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Realistically, I know that why there's no swimming at the beach, but uh, I'm the kind of beachgoer who likes to be in the water, and if I'm not in the water, it's not a real beach. I mean, I've fallen into a lake that had gators in it, like nowhere near me at the time, but still. I don't and recommend yes, also it. The, also the brain-eating amoebas that tend to run wild at, at the freshwater at the Sea World. Yeah! Okay, so there are some like hot springs and stuff where you can swim that has um, necrotizing fasciitis in it. You just can't get your nose underwater. Like it's neck down pool, basically. Good to know. So if, if there's one ever, in New uh, Zealand. So yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> but then that's why there's the quiet pool area, which must be nearly as cool as this, right? Man, it sucks being a shy introvert who likes awesome things. Hey, that's let's go to Animal pool. Kingdom Lodge. At yeah. the time of this video, there are two main areas, the Jumbo House That's and the, the Bulls motel and the pool. Village, both dripping with, can anybody <laughs> tell me? That's right, Disney magic! Or atmosphere, either one. The decorations around here do their very best to make up for the fact that Africa only got a bridge at Epcot, and to reprimand children. Okay, so I've been to hotels in the real Africa that are way nicer than this one, but that's not a criticism of this one. That's yes, this is footage from when I went on a work trip to Kenya. Even the quiet pool area is pretty big, and the large... Which there's another vlog about somewhere in the depth of my channel. <laughs> Some, somewhere, somewhere in the deeps, but uh, this isn't the 10th anniversary of that vlog, so who cares? Cool area packed with all sorts of little water park-like stuff. But other than the style and the decorations, what sets this apart from the other resorts? The freaking yeah, there was a trip that my brother and his then wife took uh, to Disney World, where they hotel hopped. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, they went from uh, one hotel and then they went to this hotel. Hotel hopping Just is probably like, going to be a lot. Uh, hotel hopping is going to be a lot more common once Galactic Star Cruiser opens. Oh, definitely. Oh, one hundred percent, absolutely. Because like when when that yeah. when your little reservation is done for Galactic Star Cruiser, you're basically screwed. Because <laughs> you still want to go to the the parks. You still want to explore more than just Hollywood Studios. <laughs> yeah, there. I'm intrigued by Galactic Star Cruiser, but it definitely seems like they're uh, taking a gamble that people are going to want to spend two whole days of Disney World vacation just doing the Star Wars thing. Yeah. But, you know, uh, there, there's a pretty steady subset of Star Wars fans, but the reason I like hotels on Disney property is so that you can leave the park in the middle of the day, take a nap, and then mm. come back. Like, you're not mm -hmm. driving all the way to Celebration just to go back to your Motel 6. No, it's like, I am leaving. It's it's lunchtime. People are getting cranky. I'm going to go take a nap. And then I'll be back at dinner. It's perfect. I believe I've gone on the record that uh, more theme parks need napping zones with like with, with like the kind of things that used to be in cross country train rides where you can just like uh, just, just like that's what they should do in all those every time they do one of those annual path lounges at DCA like part of it should be a oh napping zone I agree with like foot lockers but like people sized with a hammock yes. like, like something you could comfortably nap in but not comfortably do other things then. And, like, right. have a locker that you lock for Collapsible your stuff. Collapsible cardboard beds. 
but but also that you can lock yourself in so that you are secure and everything but yeah yeah have like a timed thing so that like chimes come on when your nap is over and yeah yeah i I'm, think there should or at least like a lawn that you're allowed to nap on anyway animals or <laughs> Just take a bus over here and walk <coughs> to make some musical numbers completely out of context. There are also a number of resorts not directly connected to any of the parks, but I'm getting bored of walking around hotel lobbies. How that's another uh, right before uh, take of the musical number. That's right before I'm doing the, look at this place, isn't it huge? However, I will take a look at the newest one, the Art of Animation Resort. The yes. lobby of this hotel is dedicated to the process of animation, particularly the development process. But the hotel rooms are in four wings, each dedicated to a different animated film. Two Pixar movies and two Cell animated movies from the 90s that were drawn from a hat, I guess. And each wing has a courtyard dedicated to the scenes and characters from its respective film. And considering they don't really have anything... Hey, it's Route 66. It's a lot of fun to walk around. <laughs> They're filled with... This one was the... I think this was the All-Star Sports before it was Art of Animation. No, 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 um... Not using it for more parts. It was the other half of the pop century. Mm. Oh, okay. I mean, sure, it's not actually another world. It's just a lifeless diorama. Because it was supposed to be like the golden years, but that never opened. Tinier than all the mm. characters and even some gotcha. All the buildings were built, but they just kind of ran out of money. Come to feeling like they're stepping right into Simba's Pride Land or Nemo's Reef or Radiator Spring. Cars Land at Disney California Adventure Park. I fucking hate you, Florida. Why can't you be cool like your older brother? Yeah, that was a relic of a time when I was in Florida longing to see the things in California. And uh, and the tables have turned. Um, <laughs> At least it's not France. <laughs> and if you're one of those shopping nightlife type people, then you and I have a lot less in common than I thought. But you still might want to check out Downtown Disney because this place costs so damn much to run that they can't possibly make it profitable. Um, Disney Springs? Oh. Downtown oh. Disney is much like any... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just the I just I forgot that you had that burp on there. Downtown Disney in Anaheim are located yeah. right outside the parks on the way to the parking lots. So you can't escape until you've attempted That's to... That's California's Downtown Disney. Disney. But downtown oh. Disney, Florida, is its own area that you have to go out of your way to reach. And we're back to Florida. I guess they figure that most Disney... That was a whole day of the vacation when I went with so my family. Smacked smack them in the face with commercialism every time they go to their car, they can just wait until one night with oh. the board comes to seek it out themselves. Now, the parking at downtown Disney is free, but it's also a post-apocalyptic wasteland... I disappeared. No I'm back. Alive. Downtown Disney here in Florida also has a bit more diversity than the Disneyland variety. There are three sections, which each contain a little shopping, a little dining, and a little entertainment, but they each choose one of these things. Whoa, I'm on top now. Let's start with the creatively named Yeah, I glitched out for a second. ...on entertainment and cultivating street gangs to sing modernized takes on often misunderstood Shakespearean tragedies. The main event here seems to be Disney Quest. The West Story joke... The West Side Story joke became topical again, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I... Re I regret now that I never went to Di went inside Disney Quest because um, it wasn't included on my pass because I had the the cheap pass and I was like I I can't afford to splurge and I mm -hmm. was not cognizant of the time that had I splurged on it it would have been a tax write off um, but uh, <laughs> I, I I regret that I never did Disney Quest even though. By all accounts, towards the end of its run, it was kind of sad in there. I still would have liked to have seen the sadness for myself. I need to show you what, what, what is going on. I put my hand out, and Bailey just laid her head in. <laughs> well, Sir Terry and Whist keep running around here somewhere. Um, I've as seen I, him. As, as I continue to continue to cat sit. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I regret that I never, I never went inside Disney Quest because. Yeah. When I went I, in 99, I vividly remember the not going into Disney Quest because they had put it on all the like Disney Channel promos about how cool it was in Disney Quest. And I was like, Mom, Dad, we gotta go. You could build your own roller coaster simulator in there. 
And my dad had to like do the difficult thing of explaining a very adult problem to a nine year old of we've already spent a lot of money on this trip and we don't have enough for for Disney Quest at this time, child. <laughs> so it's just the moment of just reaching and, and, and it being out of my grasp. And now it's closed. <laughs> Now it's the NBC, no, not NBC experience, NBA experience. I, 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 had to, I had to go back a few letters. Here's anyway, more. commerce. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing, the thing I didn't set foot inside. I haven't checked it out myself yet since it's not covered on my seasonal pass, but everything I've heard makes it sound like a glorified arcade. It's not an arcade! Okay, sorry. Look, I'm sure it's cool. It's just that every attraction I've heard about sounds. And that was a callback to. It's not a zoo. Bad thing. I'm sure a Disney Magic Arcade is better than a cheap local arcade, but I'm broke, so I can't judge it for myself. There's also a Cirque du Soleil show here, which tends to draw a pretty big crowd, and an AMC movie theater. Even the dining in the area tends to be entertainment themed, such as House of Blues or Planet Hollywood. I don't know how much of this stuff is still there under Disney Springs and how much isn't, because I haven't really paid close attention to that. Uh, I know they were replacing the Cirque du Soleil show with a new Cirque du Soleil show, and now I think that's been scrapped altogether. No. Oh. Or that's at, a shame, because it very... was going to be like the animation one. Yeah, uh, they had Eric Goldberg and everything. Um, I don't... I may be wrong about it being scrapped altogether. It may have just been put on indefinite hiatus. I'm, I'm not sure. With, with with the pandemic. Um, Planet Hollywood is still there, I'm being told in the chat, which doesn't surprise me because that's that's one of flagship Planet Hollywoods, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, I, um, a lot of things, yeah, I, I know the whole area has been completely redecorated <laughs> as Disney Spring. I know, like, Adventurer's Club was already gone by the time I first got there, so that was something I never got to experience, but um, I'm, so I, I do not know how much is still there because I do not pay that close attention to shopping centers when I'm not heavily in them. Next, we move on to Pleasure <laughs> Island, which has a fair bit of fancy dining and drinking. Admittedly, it's been a while since I've watched Pinocchio, but I seem to recall Pleasure Island being the manifestation of the negative outcomes of life hedonism. Apparently, they thought that was the right way to market to tourists. I also did not realize at the time that Pleasure Island has a whole separate backstory with its own lore that has nothing to do with Pinocchio. I did not know about Meriwether Pleasure. I did not know about any of that. If I did, I would have done extensive riffing on the lore of Pleasure Island. The history but, of, like, this part of downtown Disney is wild. Like, the, um, the Empress Lillian... Wasn't that, like, Church Street Station? No, um, that was, like, in Orlando. It used to be called the Disney Marketplace, the Disney Village Marketplace... That's where um, Chef Mickey's that moved to the Contemporary Resort opened. Mm. Like mm -hmm. the and the Explorers Club was where the SEA was formed. Mm -hmm. It was the first American thing about the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, and it was yep. like a themed performance art immersive theater bar. Somewhere between yep. a tiki bar and Indiana Jones. I, uh, yeah, that, that's one of the things I'm sad I never got to experience because it was, you know, closed by the time I got to Orlando. Um, but uh, now, now there's an actual Indiana Jones bar at Disney Springs. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I'm, I'm being told the AMC is still there. Unlike in Anaheim, where AMC got evicted from downtown Disney and uh, bumped. That's a hotel few blocks. That, got, that never got built. Yeah, <laughs> but it got bumped just a few blocks away to Anaheim Garden Walk, so... Like most things. Yep, much like House of Blues as well. But um, we all know that Disney is just going to end up buying the Garden Walk anyway within the next decade, so... I'm surprised Disney doesn't already own the Garden Walk. I mean, they partner with them for parking, as we've experienced on bad days in the park. This seems to be one of the more adult-oriented areas of Disney World, but come on, it's Disney. Even the families. 
There's still entertainment, including a variety of street performers, but they're mostly there to keep you distracted from the menu prices in the over-the-top themed restaurants. Odd place for a message from the It Gets Better campaign. <laughs> Which is why we'll I apparently got that shot during the Christmas season because uh, Nutcracker music was playing in the background, so... <laughs> Evidently. Move on to the marketplace, which contains the one restaurant you'll actually be able to afford. Oh, wait, it's not there anymore? It was replaced by one with actual flavor? Okay. While there are other dining options, make no mistake, the marketplace is about shopping. It's also the most explicitly Disney-themed section of downtown Disney, and nowhere are both these factors more prominent than in the world of Disney Store. A giant store with Disney decorations and Disney merchandise. Your one Which looks like a crate and barrel now. Clothes, Disney park clothes, yeah. Disney park clothes, and even toys and clothes of Disney characters dressed up as other characters for some reason. Well, that's just excessive. There's also a separate store dedicated to just toys. Most prominently, Hasbro toys. A whole army of Mr. Potato Heads! And I love this callback. <laughs> either are toys or are immature. Or both. There's even a store open year-round dedicated exclusively to Christmas. Boy, talk about not being holiday inclusive. Wins national high. The mark of a bougie mall everywhere. Christmas. Yeah. Another... And now the mark of Fantasyland on Arcos. <laughs> or I don't know very many geeks who didn't grow up with Legos, so walking around here should fill most of you with either nostalgia or bitter hipster declarations that you were into Legos before they had licensed properties. Something happened I hear while I was inside. Community Legos, clip. Wars, the most fascinating store to me, however, is the one I'll never be able to afford anything from, the Art of Disney. And yes, there are Art of Disney stores inside the parks as well, but I wanted to save this for last. This gallery contains all sorts of artwork and models from Disney movies and even Disney parks, created by a whole bunch of talented artists and also Thomas Kincaid. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that joke, uh, I wrote that joke before Thomas Kincaid died, and then he did die. And then enough time had passed that I was comfortable making a joke again. <laughs> Just in the advantage of it taking forever for me to finish a video. <laughs> um, the other joke I wrote for the episode that uh, then was beset by tragedy what, uh, to a point was um, in the earlier bit about uh, Disney characters dressed up as other characters. I went to the uh, Mickey and Minnie, Luke and Leia action figures. I was like, why are Mickey and Minnie playing siblings? I mean, I guess if Will Arnett and Nate Polar can do it and like cut to a Blades of Glory clip. And then I was like, hey, am I really so out of references that I'm referencing Blades of Glory? <laughs> um, but then Will Arnett and Amy Polar got divorced and I was sad making jokes about them being married when they got divorced. So. No. No. <laughs> but I wasn't too sad to make fun of Thomas Kincaid, even though he was dead. <laughs> Yeah. No. One should not be too sad to make fun of Thomas Kincaid. Um. And yeah, Art of Disney. It's it's the expensive store. Pieces, but it's worth sifting yep. them to get to the real gems, some of which only serious Disney enthusiasts would appreciate. The best of this artwork really reminds you what the Disney Company should be all about. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted. Okay, that killed it. <laughs> <laughs> that was another... That was a joke I had in the original Lost Cut. Um, and then when I went to recreate it, they didn't have that Jar Jar Goofy statue anymore. So this one shot comes from the mini DV footage, and I just hoped nobody would notice because I thought this joke was worth keeping. <laughs> There's also an actual Disney artist working on a piece before your very eyes. It's amazing to see these masters at work in person. Sure, they're mostly tracing, but they can still concentrate with a bunch of strangers staring at them, which is pretty impressive in and of itself. Although I certainly hope the company lets them take breaks from time to time. Just saying, it seems every time I'm in here, there's an artist working, and I can't help wondering if they eat. And... That's less true now. Now I see those tables and block. Well, now you've witnessed my first experiences with Walt Disney World. Plus several subsequent visits when I had to reshoot footage after a hard drive failure. So, how does it stack up for me? Do the new things I tried at Disney World overcome my defensive nostalgia for the original Disneyland? Is it worth the extra money and extra transport time for four full theme parks? Or does the smaller, cheaper California resort offer enough? 
The answer may shock you on the thrilling conclusion to Dave Does Disney. The answer is yes. <laughs> oh, YouTube annotations. No longer <laughs> applicable. Rip. R.I.P. Pour one out. Just using that song from Community. Um...